make even bigger money with a flip than you can a traditional property? That's a great question, Yetta. I know. Fortunately, we at the Decker team have spent over 30 years helping people. Helping people, yes, buy and sell real and estate. And invest. And invest in real estate and flip houses. And flip houses. But not just that. We've helped people grow in their faith. We've helped people flourish and nurture and repair relationships. Mm -hmm. We've helped people grow wealth. And we've helped people uh, really just build their finances, fix their debt problems. Mm -hmm. And so we're passionate, passionate about helping people build their lives and their homes. Yeah. And so today, the answer is, Yes, and yes, and yes, you could make more money on a flip than a traditional property with a huge flip flip of a house with a huge caveat. Yeah, if we want to make big money. Then you want to do it more than a little bit right. You want to take on probably something where there's a change of use that's significant. Yeah, that can do it. Change of use can do it. The other thing that will do it is when you can sever. Yes. That's not sever the... Well, it could be sever the house. They call it severing the house, but you don't actually chop the house in half. No, we don't chop it in half. (laughs) What we do is we sever the land. Right. And there's a few different ways of doing that. And it's not... This is not disclaimer. This is a big disclaimer. This is not for the first timer. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not for the faint (laughs) of heart, and it's not for your first time flipper. This would be a more advanced flipping technique. Right. And also, not only is it more advanced, it requires more um, forethought, more preparation, and a better and bigger team to support. Right. And before we get into severing land, I'd said you don't sever a house. I kind of want to back up that trailer, the Decker team trailer a little bit. <clears throat> if you've ever driven through Manatic, you've seen the Decker team trailer right on bank on main street. Sorry. Anyway, you can sever a house by creating a, an on like an in-law apartment, like a, an auxiliary apartment in the basement. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when you do that, you might increase the income. And increasing an income in an income property is the fastest way to flip a property. You might not even have to do any rentals. Like if you take Mm. out poor tenants, put in good tenants at a higher rate, because it's monthly monthly income, income, you've increased the profitability of the property you significantly increase the value of the price and you can flip that right? without actually doing rentals. Right. And then we would encourage you to do a couple of little Renovo, Renos, Reno, 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 Reno. Both of us have rented lips today. I know, it happens <laughs> from time to time. It's if you change the color, sometimes it just changes the look of the property. Mm-hmm. And if you change a little bit on the outside, because the savvy realtor will look up the history and go, oh, that was only sold, so it's not really worth, even though the income's increased. And so little things that you can do to change the visual appeal, although they still have the history, now all of a sudden there's more reason for an increase mm-hmm. in the value. Right. So now... One of the properties we bought in Kempville was a mm-hmm. was a severance property, and it was a multi unit income property, but it had excess lands at the back, and they were just kind of being used as a driveway and extra parking for people wherever they wanted to park around the town, and it had its own entrance at the back and at the front, so it was perfect to be able to divide in the middle. It has an entrance from the back, and this property service from the front. So we were able to chop off that chunk of land and we got $400,000 for that piece of land that we cut off. And it didn't really decrease the value of the original property. Marginally, because we maybe if, if I had to do it over again, 
I would probably have kept a little more land back so we had more parking for the for that property because we actually deleted some of the commercial space and and added three more apartments to the to the building, which then said, oh, we really should have three more parking spots. So if I'd saved a little more land, it would have been a little better in hindsight. Right. But and yet, for the most part, it didn't really. <clears throat> and it has usually, as long as you do it right, like this whole thing always comes down to right. Mm -hmm. Do the right research, make the right decisions, sever off the right amount of land. Yeah. And I remember near Algonquin College, there's a couple of roads that had some properties that were basically on 100 foot lots. And the houses were in the middle, smaller houses, but you couldn't sever a 100, 100 foot lot, yeah. but you couldn't sever it because the house was in the middle. But by buying two, if you could get two side by each, yeah, side by side, then you could carve off like 33 feet off of each one, make a new lot in the middle, which was 66 feet wide, which is a pretty wide lot in the city, and they would build infill housing on that. Those were great buys if you could get them. And sometimes you had to buy one, put a tenant in it, wait till the other one comes up for sale. Right. Could wait five, 10 years. It could never happen. That's the tricky part. But if it does come up for sale, you better be the one bidding the most for it because you've got the most to gain because you can sever that lot. Right. Or create a partnership with the person that's buying that it because, it. Mm -hmm. or who does own it or who is buying it because they won't let you have it. Maybe they're a family <laughs> member. And so that's another opportunity is to turn, take two. Yeah. Take, yeah, take two properties and turn it into three. Yeah, and now sometimes you don't even have to do that because the lot's big enough and the house is off to one side or it's a corner lot and there's enough width that you can take off a strip and you have access from the other road and now you've you've created mm -hmm. another lot. And lots in the city are going anywhere from right now 180 to 600,000 depending on where they are. And what they are. So that can be very mm -hmm. lucrative. So to speak. Incredibly now lucrative. they're limited supply. You got to watch for them and know what you're looking for because there's other people looking for them too. Exactly. And then the other opportunity is where there's a really, really little house on it. And maybe it's only going to hold one house or maybe it's in an area where you can now have duplexes. And mm -hmm. you can actually take that one little house that's really not worth much. You're pretty much paying land value for the property. Mm -hmm. And so tear down the house, which I know kind of hurts. And yet we're seeing a lot of flips happen that move way. Move it. You can but move it. But a lot it. of times they tear it down. Yeah. Or you can move them. But mm -hmm. yeah, which if you have the right piece of country property, now you're really laughing. Yeah, you can make money on that end. Mm -hmm. You make money on both ends, which yes. is fantastic. And then take what was single family, turn it into two units, and either choose to keep them long term and just flip the little house that you moved on the country mm -hmm. property or further out. Right. And if they're zoned R2, generally you can either do a duplex or you can do a semi detached. Right. Now, semi detached is kind of cool because basically what you're doing is you're severing the lot, you're building one house with a dividing wall. But you're also severing the lot at the same time when you build semi-detached and you got two titles, double the chance to make money. Which is fantastic. We like helping people make money. And that's actually the most vital thing to think about here. Having somebody as a realtor on your team that's actually done it themselves, actually knows of what they speak and has helped other people do it. The horror stories we hear is when you've got inexperience all over the place. You need experience on a team. Mm -hmm. So we're excited to be your partners moving forward because together, we've got this. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together.